What's going on guys? Welcome back to Rambler Garage. We are picking right back up where we left off on the Rambler. Um, same day and everything. But uh, we just cut the Y-pipe out. I'll show you what we're going to do with this. Um, I really wanted this exhaust to kind of be like a, a bolt-on kit where I can take it off easily if I want. Uh, as you can see with the... Uh, <laughs> those are nice. With the welds here, it's not set up so you can do that. And if we look towards the back here, it's welded all the way back. So I can't remove it. Um, I'm going to start with putting a clamp here. We're just going to do a normal band clamp. Uh, I cut that off. I'm going to clean up the cut a little bit and uh, put a clamp on it, which I have in the old Amazon bag right there. But uh, I also think I'm going to clean this pipe up a little bit because I did have some leaking off the back or off one of my valve cover. One of my valve covers is leaking pretty heavily, as you can see there. So I want to clean that up and uh, just clean the pipe up while it's out. Uh, you can see the O2 for the Holly Sniper there. And uh, then we're just going to put it back in. Um, it was set up to use these, which I'm going to use, but that just looks restrictive to me. Not that it like really matters in this for this, but uh, I'm clean that up a little bit too. I don't know if you're supposed to reuse these. Kind of looks like you probably shouldn't for that one. You can tell that one went in right there, but it doesn't look like it's sealed the best. So I might see if I can get some replacements for those, get those put in place. But uh, we're gonna put that Y pipe back up in there and we're gonna clamp it down. And then this thing needs some super coolant, obviously. Coolant and uh, it needs a throttle rod put in place. And I also have a little bit of a fuel leak in the back. So you can see we're bleeding off pressure. We should be sitting at 40 PSI. So I'm gonna take care of that. And uh, then we can pull it out and maybe go for a ride. Well, I made a little oopsies. I put the radiator, well, I put the alternator on when we started it in the last video. Uh, it was rubbing on the, the upper radiator hose here. So I uh, put a nice little slice in it. It wasn't leaking, but it looked like something that could potentially uh, bulge in the future and kind of burst on me. So I don't want to deal with that. Uh, so pulled that off, which kind of sucked because I just, I don't know how well you can see. Well, now I drained it out, but I just topped this thing off with coolant. So I made a little mess down in there, but that's all right. Um, so that's taken care of. I got a new bolt up on the top back there. You can kind of see. So we are ready to, uh, well, I got to put the exhaust back on. That shouldn't be a big deal. Um, I was able to find some of these guys at the old auto zone. So I just got to find some time to get under there, line them up and bolt it up. And uh, I am going to use a clamp back there, as I told you guys. And uh, the band clamp that I ordered, just like that one, um, that's a two and a quarter. This pipe is two and a half. I didn't know before I got under there. So uh, the two and a half inch one is lost in transit with uh, Amazon. So waiting on that. But uh, as you can see, made a little coolant mess. It'll evaporate, I'm sure. Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> All right, guys. So progress has been made. We got the exhaust, got the right clamp, and got it clamped up in there. Looks pretty good. Um, all the exhaust is lined up on the manifolds. I don't know how you can see down there, but we're all connected again. Um, I do have a box right there with the radiator hose, so we're going to go put that on. <clears throat> we're going to make sure we clear the uh, alternator this time, and then we're going to fill it up with coolant and see if we can get this thing to bleed. My hose is in. Just cut it down. Cut a little shorter than the last one, so we have a ton of space here with the alternator, even with some engine flex. We should be okay. So we're going to clamp that in. I'm going to top her off with some coolant here. And I think we're going to run it, let it run and uh, see what it does. So we're down on the ground. But you can hear we got a pretty good vacuum leak, I think. So um, it's running okay. It's just hunting for the idle. You look in there. It's bouncing down in the 600s to the 800s. So it's doing a good job of holding it. I'm just going to let this bleed. And then we're going to hunt down that vacuum leak. Uh, i got some stuff burning off here. paint stuff and odds and ends I'm sure. So I'm guessing the vacuum leak is somewhere in the intake uh, manifold gasket or the, the car spacer area. We'll figure it out. Alrighty guys, so it's been a while since I worked on this thing. I've been working on the square body there, but uh, a little something wrong here. But uh, just protecting the fender. Um, we are trying to figure out where the vacuum leak's at, so I'm going to pop this intake manifold off. Uh, one of these gaskets, I don't remember if I said in the previous video, but one of the gaskets had a little tear in it. 
I don't know if that's causing it. And then I also don't know if I got the head deck surface all that clean. So uh, I'm just going to take this as an opportunity to pull things apart, clean it up, take a little time. It should only take me about 15 minutes to pull all this apart. Uh, we have no feel in our lines, no pressure, so we're not even going to make a mess there. Um, already started just a little bit, but uh, you know, we're just going to pull this off. We'll replace the gaskets here with some nice Mr. Gasket gaskets. Uh, just a little bit nicer than the cheap Felpro ones. And then I'm probably going to clean up the surface and toss a little RTV on both sides of these gaskets. Um, I don't really like to do that, but I don't want to keep pulling this apart. So, um, yeah, let's uh, keep wrenching on it, pull it apart, and uh, go from there. Well, I got everything off. Uh, everything looks relatively clean still. I'm just going to do some cleanup around some of these surfaces just to make sure that they're nice and clean. Uh, just looking at the gaskets, they look okay for the most part. I see one spot right here that looks like there's maybe a a little spot that it could have let air in. Um, I also have to make sure that the intake manifold surfaces are clean. The actual head surfaces, we flip them around. I don't see anything that stands out there. They look clean. So I'm going to have to go get some new gaskets out of storage. We'll put it all back together. I don't know if I want to use RTV or some... Uh, some copper spray. I'm not sure. I don't know if you can use copper spray on intake manifolds. I'll have to look. I don't see why you put it. Uh, other thing I noticed that um, this guy right here was sitting up a little bit. So I don't know if maybe there's some like cross flow into the, the chambers of the uh, intake manifold that was causing issues. Who knows? Uh, I'll go get these new. These are just the cheap ones as you can tell. I'll get some new ones of these. Take care of that. And uh, we'll replace those. So uh, I'll be back shortly when I have some new gaskets. All right, we are back together again. I did RTV the intake gaskets, super light coat, just to make sure any uh, inconsistencies are sealed up. Uh, everything else is back in here, vacuum hoses, everything back there. So we should be okay to try and start. We'll see if it'll idle okay. Um, I'm hoping it's a uh, vacuum leak resolved. I do have a fuel leak to fix, and then I was using a fender mat and sitting on there it just I don't for whatever reason must have been humidity or something um, just attached itself in there but I haven't uh, put on the throttle linkage just because it's a pain to get on and off if we do have to take this apart again so I'm gonna make sure it runs well then we'll put that on and uh, we'll see alrighty got a key I'm gonna start it from outside keys in powers on No leaks up here. No fuel pressure. Give her a start. Battery is unhappy. To say the least. So I don't think it'll start on low voltage like that because the sniper will be unhappy. So I'm going to put the battery on charger real quick and we'll come back to it. All right, it's been a little bit. Let's try this again. So uh, I don't, I don't know if he has if ever. Well, it wasn't in this scenario. Uh, it didn't happen. But if you ever run your car and you don't have this bolt in there and it's got a massive vacuum leak, it might be that thing. But um, we figured it out. It wasn't that. It runs better now. Let's see. All right, guys. So we got a couple new surprises on this thing. The first one is I pulled the top off. We're gonna get that redone. Sorry for the wind, but. Uh, I was gonna go for a drive the other day and I lost all brakes. Taking a look at this, I have zero brake pressure, or zero brake fluid in the front there. Um, I don't recall if that's the front or the rears. I believe it is the rears, let me confirm. Kinda hard to tell. Disregard, so that is the fronts. Uh, not really sure what happened. I don't see any fluid on the ground. 
we're going to replace this master because I thought the master was bad and honestly it just looks kind of rough. So uh, it needs to be bled anyway, so a decent time to replace it. I have a new one coming. Uh, we'll get that bled and we'll uh, get it in there. And we'll try and figure out if we got a leak or what's going on. I'm sure that'll expose itself pretty quickly if there is one. All our new master came in. I went and grabbed some new adapters. We do adapt from a half inch to a three eighths inch line. Um, the old ones were fine for the most part, but the other one, of which I've lost somewhere in my truck, had a bunch of gunk build up in here. So, um, I don't know, just went and grabbed some new ones because they're only 10 bucks. And this one's a little longer, so I think it will uh, might fit in there a little better too. Whereas I think this is kind of bottoming out there. I don't know if that contributed to a leak at one point or what, but uh, just threw some paint on here. I'm going to let it dry, and then we'll swap the uh, brake switch over those on get it back in the car and we'll uh, bench bleed it okay guys so we got the car back together with the new master in there I did not get a chance to paint the, the cross member brace there but we'll get to it um, everything is bled I do have the rears blocked off for now because the rears are not currently working um, I need to find the correct uh, wheel cylinders for the rears and uh, we'll eventually take care of that so that is uh, right there the the master came with a little block off, so that's in place. Should work. Um, I'm still having a misfire, and I have a theory for why that is happening. Um, our Vertronics Igniter 3 requires a constant 12 volt power source, and I'm not sure if that wire is has a resistor in it, so um, I'm going to wire direct to the battery and go around the block and see if that takes care of things. So I'm going to try that right now. I'll take you guys with car right away is idling maybe a little better. It'd be nice if this was the issue. That's our issue. I think we have a, I don't have a stumble at all anymore. I think we have a bad power wire to the coil, which is where our Protronics is getting its power from. They're not a bad power wire, but it's just, it's uh, resisted, so it's not giving it the full voltage that it needs. Uh, we're gonna turn around here, we'll head back, but I think this is gonna wrap up this video. This car is finally running. It runs very well, minus that misfire. Um, it's Temperatures are great. Brakes are now working better than they had be before. Um, well, I'm pretty happy with it. we will be able to start driving this thing the rest of the this summer here and into the fall. And the uh, only thing I do need to do is a brake switch on the brakes is not working. Uh, I'm going to get a, a physical mechanical one because uh, the hydraulic ones are just terrible. So, um, yeah, just driving here. It's running a lot better. So what I'm going to do is probably wire up a relay and uh, we'll get a constant power supply or power source on that that coil and the igniter that is just triggered by um, ignition source so I think we're good to go I'm gonna wrap this video up while I have you guys on here um, I'm pretty happy with this we'll be back with the Rambler in the next video I'm gonna do some driving videos kind of like I've done with the Trans Ams um, so that that's uh, to come but I want to thank you guys for watching and uh, thank you guys for uh, hanging in with us here over the past uh, couple months while we work on this thing and uh, looking forward to keep working on it